Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Hendy here, and what a weekly show we have lined up for you. This week we're going to be talking about Final Fantasy VII, a new Angry Birds game, Swift Key going free, and a whole lot more. You've got a great weekend to get to, so let's get started. First up this week, Square Enix is bringing Final Fantasy VII to Android. Kind of. It's not the full game, but it has been announced that Square Enix will be bringing an endless runner to Android called Final Fantasy VII G-Bike. If you played the game, you no doubt remember the mini-game where you ride the bike around to fend off bad guys and protect your teammates. Imagine that game in a mobile endless runner format and you essentially have what this game is. It looks like it'll be a lot of fun and Final Fantasy fans will probably love it, but I think I might have been more excited if they'd done a snowboarding game instead. One of the bigger pieces of news this week is SwiftKey going free. So uh, we did a video about this and that will be linked at the end of the video and in the video description below so we won't go into too much detail about it here. Suffice it to say that SwiftKey is now a free application that has in-app purchases. The in-app purchases consist solely of themes so you get the core functionality of SwiftKey for nothing and if you want to make it look pretty it'll cost you just a buck or two. Some people who bought SwiftKey back when it was a paid application aren't happy about the transition but the app was never really more expensive than a Big Mac meal at McDonald's and it's better for your cardiovascular health so frankly I don't don't see what the big deal is. Word around the internet grapevine is that Google is working to unify all of their app designs for all of their Google apps across all platforms. The initiative, which is being called Quantum Paper by bloggers, is an effort by Google to make all of their applications look and perform exactly the same way across web, iOS, and Android. This would be a huge step for Google because a common complaint is the inconsistencies of the applications from one another, as well as inconsistencies from mobile to web. Quantum Paper would fix all of that. It's expected that all of the apps would receive a major redesign on all platforms similar to what Google Plus went through a few weeks ago. This includes new designs, new icons, and a new design standard. Of course, this is all speculation at this point that is based on rumors and things that we've already seen. If it is real, we'll probably see more about it at Google I.O. In our last bit of news this week, Amazon has a new streaming service for Amazon Prime customers. In an effort to make their Prime subscription service look more awesome than it already is, Amazon has now added Amazon Prime Music to the list of features that Prime customers get for the $99 a year on top of the free two-day shipping and Amazon Instant Video, among other things. Currently, it's only available in the United States. The service comes with over a million songs, which beats out Pandora, but pales in comparison to larger competitors like Google Play All Access, Spotify, and others. The good news is that there is no skip restrictions, no advertisements, and you can download any song for offline listening. It's available on PC, Mac, in the Amazon App Store, and the Google Play Store, and iOS. Be wary though, because there are a few release day bugs to deal with. So who wants to see some trending applications? As usual, if you want to check any of these applications out, you can find the links in the written companion, which is in the video description below. First up in our trending applications this week is Aereo. You may already know this application for its ability to stream live television straight to your device without prior cable service being required. The app got a huge update this last week that added Chromecast support. There were also some bug fixes and performance improvements. If you're interested in what's going on at Google I.O., and frankly everybody should be, you can find everything you're looking for in the official Google I.O. application. Using this app you can watch the keynote and sessions on live stream, get reminders about events, look at prior years, and it even comes with widget support. What I like about this app is how useful it is even if you aren't going to Google I.O., so if you want to be there but you actually can't be there, then this is the application to get. The last big update to Action Launcher was actually a couple of months ago, but there are some big things brewing in the beta version that includes awesome features like the OK Google hot word and a new feature that lets you double tap your screen to put it to sleep. It's estimated that these features will reach the stable release sometime in the relatively near future, so why not try it out now? Amazon Kindle is already a popular application and it's had a huge update this last week. Some of the new features include switching between reading and listening modes on the fly, some copy and paste features, improved cross-device syncing and notifications, and a whole lot more. If you have it, the update should have been available in the Google Play Store for a few days now, so just check there to get it. Last up this week is Rovio's attempt to turn Angry Birds into an RPG. Dubbed Angry Birds Epic, the application was released just yesterday and so far the reviews are surprisingly good and the rating is surprisingly high. The gameplay seems pretty good and so far there aren't any really egregious complaints. It's free with in-app purchases but we knew that going into this so there's no real reason not to try it out if you like Angry Birds, RPGs, or both. 
Once again, I'm Joe Hindi from AndroidAuthority.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you want to follow Android Authority myself or the rest of the video team, you can find our social media links in the video description below. If you're hanging out for a minute, we have a couple of awesome videos for you to watch right over there, including my video about SwiftKey going free, as well as Joshua Vergara's feature focus on the LG G3 smart software. Finally, don't forget to check out the written companion in the video description for all of the source and all of the download links. As always, thanks for watching everybody, and have a wonderful day.